Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the sixth video of the entire series of ADFS. In the last video, we discussed what are endpoints in ADFS. We discussed how to manage endpoints using ADFS management console and using PowerShell. In this particular video, we will be talking about relying party trust in ADFS. I will be showing you practically how to create relying party trust. We will discuss what is claims issuance policy and how to create a claim rule so that ADFS can send specific claims to the application. If we go by definition, relying party trust is a term that is used to identify which applications are authorized to communicate with ADFS server. Let's consider one example and let's understand what does it mean. Let's say a user is trying to access an application. This application is integrated with ADFS server. Now this application will reach to an endpoint of this ADFS server to get the security token. ADFS will construct a token, will add claims within the token, and will send this token to the application. This is what usually happens when a user tries to access a federated application. But the question is how ADFS server will identify that the request that is coming from this application is a valid request or not. How ADFS server will identify whether this request should be entertained or not, or how ADFS server will know that I have to issue a security token to this particular application. So there has to be something so that ADFS server can trust this application. There has to be a trust between ADFS and application so that ADFS can accept the request from the application and it can issue a token to that particular application. And this trust is called relying party trust. When you integrate an application with your ADFS server, it creates a relying party trust for that particular application within your ADFS server. With the help of relying party trust, ADFS will identify that the request that is coming from an application is a valid request. And I have to issue a security token to this application. A relying party trust contains the information about the application name, the protocols that this application will support, and what sort of claims this application needs within the security token. Without a relying party trust, an application cannot communicate with ADFS server. So relying party trust is a communication channel between ADFS server and the application. And the organization that hosts this application is called relying party. Now let me show you practically how we can create a relying party trust. You can create relying party trust either from ADFS management console or you can use PowerShell. If you want to use PowerShell, then you can run command add hyphen ADFS relying party trust. But if you want to do it from ADFS management console, then you will go to relying party trust and then you will click add relying party trust. On the first screen of this wizard, it will ask you the application that you're going to integrate with this ADFS server, whether that application is a claims aware application or it is a non claims aware application. ADFS supports only claims aware applications because ADFS works on claims based identity model. So we will select claims aware and then we will click start. Now, before you integrate an application with your ADFS server, you need certain information for that application. Information like the URL of that application, because when ADFS will issue a token to the application, ADFS needs a URL where it can issue that security token. Second, you need the information of the protocols. What sort of protocols are supported by the application, whether it is WS Fed or it is SAML protocol. And third, 
you need the information of the claims. What sort of claims this application need within the security token from the ADFS server? So the application vendor can give you that information in multiple ways. He can give you an online link or he can give you a file which is located somewhere on the network. So if you have online URL or a file that is located on the network, you can select the first option. And if you have a URL, you can simply type the URL here, for example, like this, and you can click next. This will create a relying party trust automatically based on the information that is available within this link. If you have the file on the network, you can specify the path of that file. And let's say you have XML file. The vendor of application has provided you federation metadata of the application in XML file. So you, you will click on second option and then you will click browse. You will select the file, click open, and this will create relying party trust. Now let's say you do not have online URL or you don't have a file on the network or you do not have XML file of the federation metadata of the application. Now, in that case, you need to select the third option that is enter data about the relying party manually. Click next. Here you can give it a name, for example, test relying party trust. And then click next. Here it will ask you for the token encryption certificate. If you have the certificate, you can browse to the certificate or you can skip this. Then click next. Now here it will ask you what sort of protocol application supports. Is it WS Fed or SAML? Which protocol is supported? So based on the selection, you can select Based on the requirement, you can select the option. And here you need to mention the URL of the application. For example, like this. Then click Next. So it has to be HTTPS. Click Next. Here you have already selected. If this is not the URL of the application, you can add a new one. For example, like this, abc.application.com, click Add, and this will be added, and then click Next. On this screen, it will give you an option that when users will try to access this particular application, do you want them to be prompted for MFA? If you select Permit Everyone, then the users will not get MFA prompt. If you select this option, permit everyone and require MFA, in that case, when users will try to access this application, they will be prompted for MFA. Same way, if you want to enable MFA for specific group, you can select this option. If you want that when a user is trying to access this application from external network, only in that case, those users will be prompted for MFA. So you can select this option. Or based on your requirement, you can select any other option. So once you have made the changes here, click Next. You can review the changes under this, and then click Next, and then click Close. So this Relying Party Trust is created. That means this abc.application.com application can connect to this ADFS server. And this ADFS server can send security token to this application as well. However, there is no claim configured within this relying party trust. If you go to claim issuance policy, there is no claim rule defined. Claim issuance policy decides what sort of claims ADFS server will send to the application within this security token. If there is no claim, in that case, authentication will fail. So let's consider one small example to understand what exactly claim issuance policy is. When we create a user account in Active Directory, few attributes are created automatically. For example, name, phone number, department, or email address. In Active Directory, these are called attributes. And in ADFS, 
all these attributes are called claims. Now let's assume this user wants to access an application. So this application will reach to an endpoint of the ADFS server and will ask for a security token along with the email address attribute of the user. ADFS will contact Active Directory to get the authentication done for this user. And ADFS will ask Active Directory to issue email address attribute of this user once this user is authenticated. So once authentication is done, Active Directory will return the claim to the ADFS server. Then ADFS server will construct a token. It will add the claim within the token and will send this token to the application. Now the rule that decides what attribute ADFS will ask Active Directory to issue and what attribute or claim ADFS will send to the application is decided by claim issuance policy. So claim issuance policy is a set of rules that decide which claim ADFS server will send to the application within the token. To create claim rule, you will select the relying party trust and then you will go to edit claim issuance policy. On this particular screen, you will click on add rule. Under claim rule template, you will select send LDAP attributes as claims. Go next. Here you can give it a name. For example, test claim rule. Under attribute store, you will select active directory because ADFS server will contact Active Directory to issue claims after user is authenticated. Under mapping of LDAP attributes to outgoing claim types, under LDAP attribute, you will select the attribute name that ADFS server will ask Active Directory to issue once user is authenticated. So for example, we will select email address. Outgoing claim is, what claim ADFS will add within the security token when he will send that token to the application? Let's say email address. So based on your requirement, you can select the attributes and then click finish. Click apply and click OK. So this rule is created. Now, whenever this application will contact to the ADFS server, though this is a test example that I'm showing you, but when this application will contact this ADFS server, ADFS server will contact Active Directory. It will ask Active Directory to issue email address attribute. Then ADFS will construct a token. It will add email, addr email address attribute within the token, and then it will send that token to the application. So this is how relying party trust and claim issuance policy work. In the next video, we will be discussing what is claims X-ray tool. I will show you practically how to add claims X-ray tool as a relying party trust and how we can use this tool to test authentication of your ADFS server. And then I will show you how we can analyze this authentication process using Fiddler. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.